What's going on guys, MG here, and I'm back with another cryptocurrency video. So let's get into it guys, market cap, 2 trilly, okay, 2039 trilly, we are down, staggering 300 billion, just whew, wiped off the market cap. Our 24 hour volume though guys, has doubled, it's very interesting, how the math is just like, okay, <clears throat> we've been trending under 150 billion 24 hour volume for quite some time now and now it doubles and our market cap is lower btc dominance 42.3 it's looking like it's rising eth dominance however is still the same i think yesterday it was 19.4 as well gas prices are still redonkulous let's take a look at this so right now it is across the board 108 guay so if you're going to be moving into stables or if you're going to be buying stables or anything related to the ethereum network get ready to get robbed <clears throat> all right so let's go down the list here it's looking like we are in the green now b btc is hanging out at pretty much forty six thousand, up 6.16 percent in the 24 hour Time frame Ethereum 34 Hondo up 11%. Like, look, look at these numbers, guys. These are huge. You can tell we were uh, the market was obviously manipulated yesterday. So, in yesterday, yesterday's news, yesterday's news, in yesterday's video, <clears throat> I practically woke up, you know what I'm saying? Got my coffee, all that stuff, and I just started recording the video, and it should explain. My obliviousness, if that's a word, to the whole situation. I just thought it was like your everyday manipulation. Turns out I was right. I mean, it's it's our market, guys. Two trillion. It's not. It's it's a lot of money, but if you're if you're a, a big player, you can manipulate it. And it's it's looking like it was a aside from the billions and dollars in liquidations, including long liquidations including one guy who lost 43 milli uh yeah that's just insane like imagine waking up you know because last night you were long as fuck and then you wake up and that's it 43 million gone you know that's insane so that person lost 43 million yesterday cardano my cardano hanging out at 240 up 14.51 percent guys that's fantastic and if you guys don't know already, Charles Hoskinson already made it official. The RFC was sent out. And Alonzo, <clears throat> excuse me, wow. Alonzo will be deploying here on the 12th, which is the Sunday. So hoping to see some nice little pumpy, pumpy action here. It may or may not happen for the 12th. We'll see, especially since the BIS and the IMF uh, tried to flex on it on El Salvador by dumping the market when they made it legal tender, but we'll see. I mean, we'll see Binance Coin hanging out at $413, up 8%. XRP, $1.10, 8%. Uh, XRP is one of the last coins in the top 10 that has to rip. Like, literally every single coin in the top 10 has ripped already beyond all-time highs. Okay, and uh, it's just XRP. XRP was about to do it. And uh, the SEC FUD happened, the court case, since January, guys. It's almost September. It's already September now. And they're probably going to settle out of court finally. And this fucking coin's going to rip to like five bucks, I bet. Solana season, super strong. Um, it is it is down by about 20 bucks. But it's up again 7.36%. Uh, like, imagine if you fumbled into Solana over the weekend because everyone was hype on Solana. It's like... If you've been in the space as long as I have, there's always a new coin. There's always an there's always a new wave, and uh, the uh, the people who were early adopters are just along for the ride and just enjoying it. Still tremendously up, especially if you're a Solana soldier since 2020. Dogecoin though, taking a beating. However, it's back up to seven. It back up seven percent. You know, meme coins were the flavor in Q1 and Q4 of 2020, Q1 of 2021 and Q4 of 2020. But now I think uh, NFTs have taken over as the spotlight as 
something that the people can easily access. The only true doggy coin is SHIB. Come on, guys. Not because I'm in it. Well, yes, because I'm in it, but SHIB has much more utility than Doge. Polkadot up 9.80%. Watch, there's going to, going to be another dump, and then just wipe out all of Polkadot's gains. Uniswap up 5%, $23. Bitcoin Cash up 7%. Almost six 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 dollars. Terra Luna, jeez, look at this, guys, up thirty three percent. Probably reclaimed a lot of its highs and lows here. Chainlink no longer chain sync up three point seven seven percent. Litecoin hundred eighty one up three point eighty two. ICP zero point forty two. Filecoin up ten percent. Matic up six at a dollar thirty. V Chain Soldiers up three point. 57 at 11 cents. ETC is pumping. 666%. Avalanche. Remember, this coin was hot a couple weeks ago. Theta up 4.65. And when we scroll down here, we got my ship up 734%. So I'm just taking a sip of my coffee here. It is a some South American blend. No cream, no sugar. You know, it's Wednesday. Short, shorter week. So let's get into it, guys. Um, Fear and Greed Index. Just take a look here. We are now at 47. That's a huge dump in terms of Fear and Greed. Yesterday, while the market was dumping, I think we were at like 73. <laughs> now we're at 47. We're, 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 we're all neutral, guys. We're neutral. Now let's take a look at the alt season index. It's looking like it's 45. It's still climbing. It's still altcoin month. It's still altcoin year. Uh, probably once we start reaching into the 60s, uh, that's when stuff will start to heat up. However, Bitcoin still needs to run because that's part of the cycle. Bitcoin still needs to run and alts will take a step back and they'll be on sale. And then once BTC cools off, then all season 2.0 will happen. The last one, the most powerful part of the altcoin cycle, and then bear market. <clears throat> so let's get into it here. Um, let's actually take a look at. Let's take a look at Cardano here. Um, where's my tether? Okay, let's do tether. Let's take out our drawings here. Um, let's take a look at the week. So, So it's looking like we had a bullish continuation cluster here. It's looking like it's still maintaining the bullish uh, continuation. EMA ribbons have gone completely bullish, very, very well spread out. In fact, we even bounced off of this EMA level at $1.95. I can't believe Cardano wicked that low. <laughs> um, we got this bullish continuation here well above the 50-day moving average which is great, and uh, money flow, money flow is looking good here. I can't really tell if that's going, if that's being more narrow or if it's going to spread out. I'm just going to, I'm just going to remain neutral on that stance here, <clears throat> and uh, say that money flow will eventually pop off. We had this bottom confirmed on the 2nd of August, and it was just upward momentum until the powers that be stepped in and dumped Cardano. But it's good to see that it, it recovered very, very nicely, like every other coin did, because that type of dump was just unnatural. Aside from the, aside from the leverage traders, because that's very typical. Guys who do that typically get liquidated by the whales, but, you know, that's another topic here. So it's looking like uh, Cardano is going to establish this as the new swing high at $3.091. Probably next week, 
we will confirm that as the swing high uh, resistance and this is our key structural support level at a dollar two so uh, looking like we're still on trend here <clears throat> so VWAP acting as support here money flow is actually starting to look like it's going to it's going down according to the daily here so it's looking like a bearish divergence is beginning to happen <clears throat> how low it's going to go I'm not quite sure it may actually if I have to take a stab at it since September is historically bearish it may actually test the two dollar level uh, we do have dollar fifty here as support as well and as far as actually you know what this is still this level here at a dollar eighty six is still is the swing low support there support level so <coughs> It's looking like Cardano's bullish trajectory is still intact here. I mean, sure, this is cutting it real close, cutting it real tight. <clears throat> However, as long as Cardano does not break below the $1.89 level, this is all good with me, baby. All Cardano has to do is just do this all throughout September. And then the breakout in in October once the market fully recovers because September is just historically just a bearish month so <clears throat> that's something that I expect. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Wow, let me take another sip of my drink. So to all the other Ada astronauts out there, our trend is still intact, guys. So. We can just drop this channel here. Why not? Why not? We got smart contracts coming on the twelfth, and uh, in case everyone is confused about the FUD, it it seems like it's actually it's not that it seems. It's completely true that the developers in MenSwap uh, did not follow directions to uh, write their smart contracts following the E. UTXO method, which is basically Bitcoin's uh, accounting method. <clears throat> money in, money out, blah, blah, blah. Just you guys can read all about it, UTXO. Uh, UTXO is Bitcoin's accounting method, and Cardano expands on that with E, UTXO. And apparently the guys over at MenSwap were writing their smart contract using the Solidity framework. And... Uh, things weren't working out properly even though in IOHK's FAQ section there are three there there is a knowledge article showing three ways to go around this so you know that's what a testnet is for to find out bugs or test or dev environment is uh, what we like to call it at my place of employment so we'll go here into into luna so <clears throat> real quick luna is still looking really really good here so luna is still well above the 50 day as well as the 200 day in fact it's recovered so nicely that the 200 day level actually increased now this level here, thirty-six dollars and seventy-eight, is still the unchallenged uh, swing high resistance, and the twenty-six dollar twenty-five level is the swing low su structural support level. It's looking like Luna has survived the the bearish trend. It wicked below the key structural support level, but it recovered nicely. So as far as I'm concerned, Luna is still going to go sideways, maybe range here a little bit, maybe retest 36, possibly breakout. It depends how hard the market will recover. I'm sure we'll be back we'll be back to singing tunes here in a couple weeks. <clears throat> Cause what it is the eighth of September, so the market will probably start to reheat up in a couple weeks. So for for all you Luna 
lunatics out there, your trend is still intact. Your trend is still bullish. Uh, just watch out for twenty five. Just watch out for twenty five dollars and ninety cents. Should it fall below that, then we will have to reevaluate the chart and Luna will officially have broken market structure. So you guys are still looking good. So let's let's actually take a look at Solana here. The the new kid on the block. Like look at this guys. This is insane. Just gone. Completely parabolic guys. I uh don't know what else to say about this chart here. Uh up only, I guess. <laughs> so okay. Um Oops. The fuck. Okay. So I'm going to confidently say since since Solana is just completely defying all logic here that this is Solana's new resistance level here. Uh I'm I am will probably need a couple more days to confirm Solana's support structural support level, but if I were to take a guess, it's probably going to be a hundred forty six dollars. <laughs> so Solana has a lot of has a lot of support. And uh this is a pretty nice new accumulation range for Solana. More than likely it's going to range within these within this level here. So let's see, price range. Yeah, you know, uh, pretty tight spread, 33.17% spread, so probably like what, what is that, 16 point something up or down? That's not bad at all, especially for a coin as powerful as Solana, a coin that's as used as much as Solana, a coin that's as active as Solana. I can definitely see Solana ranging here. This is going to be the new accumulation range, so if you were looking to get into Solana, this might be your chance here. Uh, you could probably set some stink bids here at 146 if you wish. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's what's going on with Solana. I mean, depending how bearish September is going to be, sure, you could probably maybe put another stink bid here at 129. <clears throat> but, you know how our market goes. As long as a coin has utility and is very popular, uh, it's just going to keep going up, you know, like you, uh, coins that are being used generally go up. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. So, uh, a bullish divergence has already started. I don't know when it's going to spring. It's probably going to, if I were to take a guess, probably the first few, the first week of October is probably when it's going to, when Solana is going to pop off beyond $200. Uh, that's my guess because it's it's starting, guys. Money flow is looking fantastic. Uh, there is a bearish divergence beginning here, but I seriously doubt it's going to actually happen. It might maybe touch 146, but in general, Solana is looking <laughs> it's looking really good, guys. Like and look at these, look at the EMA ribbons just going completely ham. So Solana is looking really good here uh let's actually take a look at i want to see polka dots let's see what's going on with polka dots here hang on All right, check out polka dot. Check out polka dots with this huge dump. It it just shows how uh, unnatural it is because EMA ribbons are still bullish. Dot is completely above, well above the fifty day money flow popping off. VWAP acting as support here. This 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 bullish divergence again is is starting uh, just like 
just like um, Solana. I think it's probably going to pop off in the first week of October. And as far as resistance levels go, I'm going to say that this is probably Polkadot's latest resistance level here at $35.71. Now, as far as support, here it is right here. It's right below the 50-day. So we can just remove, oops. We can just remove the 50-day here. So this is going to be the range for polka dots. Again, so long as polka dot does not break below the $23 support level, polka dot is fine. This is all noise. You know what I'm saying? So if you're into polka dots, which I am not, I do own some, but not enough for significant gains. Got this huge frog in my throat, guys. Not enough for significant gains. I'm just buying it just to hedge and protect my wealth because, you know, when the, when those uh, parachains come out, when those parachains come out, dot is going to be a force to be reckoned with. I'm primarily, it's funny how like my mentality has shift shifted before I would feel a sense of competitiveness when it comes to these smart contract plays that I'm in. But now the unifying factor is NFTs. I'm like really, really stoked for NFT communities that are going to spring up in the polka dot ecosystem. So, uh, polka dot is looking good. Okay, money money flow looking fantastic there. Bullish divergence already beginning. Uh, the trend, oops, I'm tripping. Hold on. This trend is quite tight, but it's still intact here. I mean, this dump, like, look how close. Look how close. Uh, polka dot was getting ready to challenge its uh, swing high resistance here. I wonder if that's like what that kind of looks like a bull, that kind of looks bull flaggy, right? Or is that Or that looks like a bear flag. <laughs> Whatever. But man, you guys know what I'm talking about here. Um polka dots looking good, you know, all 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 you dot heads out there, don't even worry about it. Like just keep just just trust the plan, you know what I'm saying? Uh, again, I'm not educated in the Gavin Wood camp. Um, I'm not educated in the Gavin Woods camp. Uh, but you guys are still looking good. Just watch out for the $23 level. In fact, you could probably put in some stink bids there. Just in case, so you can make your polka dot bag heavier. But uh, yeah, this is pretty much all you need to worry about here. You have a 52% spread so 20 26 and some change up and down not bad at all polka dots looking really good in my opinion but you know me i'm a, I'm always bullish baby let's take a look at uni here full disclosure i am in uni you guys know i'm in uni so it's looking like it's the same situation with um with uniswap as well let's see um Got that support, that resistance level, thirty-one dollars and forty-two cents, and <clears throat> excuse me, and it's looking like Uniswap narrowly missed it. Narrowly missed its uh, structural support level of twenty dollars and sixty-five cents. So I'm not convinced with Uniswap. We do have this bearish divergence already starting. Okay, so you, it's looking like Uni might 
touch $20. It's very possible. I don't think it'll break the support level, structural support level of $20, because just judging by the point in time where we are in this market cycle, okay, it's just... I mean, this has just been an insane cycle, <laughs> guys, let's be honest here, like, the whole Elon FUD, all this other crap, it's just unreal, <clears throat> so this trend has been broken, okay, however, the stru its structure is still not broken, which I believe is the more important factor in the, all of this, as long as Uniswap does not fall below $20, I think the... Structure will be, is still intact. We can probably even lower this shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, we just draw these fancy lines for our confirmation bias. So what I'm hoping is that Uniswap will just bounce off of this trend line that we just drew and just slowly make its way back up all throughout the month of September. But as far as I'm concerned, guys, uh, Uniswap's structure is still intact here. It's not the prettiest looking chart here, but, you know, as long as it doesn't fall below 20 bucks, we should be Gucci gang. What else? Um, you know, I want to actually look at some, some of my gaming plays. So, Sand. Full disclosure, I am not in Sand, guys. Even though I've been covering Sand for over six months now. I think my first sand video was back in March when it was like a quarter. Uh, I did not get a chance to ape into this coin. Unfortunately, I did not during the depths of the bear trend that we were experiencing in uh, May and June. I was primarily focused on other coins. I just wish I was more liquid that I would have just aped in some bands into sand but it's all good uh i know that sand will have a bright future because i was there for the two cent decentraland and two cent sand back in november october of last year it's crazy how time flies right okay so oops So that is Sans resistance level, key resistance level there, a dollar nineteen. And and I've identified this as <clears throat> as Sans key support level here at 55 cents so okay sand has pumped tremendously since the 21st of august okay since the 21st of august the local bottom was confirmed here and it went as high up as 119 percent so if you, if you caught that pump congratulations that's awesome <clears throat> i think sand is a great product again i did a video on them months ago and I am not in sand. I wish I was, but it's all good. The One of the key points of sand is it has its own kind of like auction house. I don't know if you guys ever played games like World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy XIV. It just has its own auction house, its own ecosystem. You can buy land on it and build. It's just really, really fun. Right For me, personally, I'm looking for more of like a Star Atlas type situation. I want a a blockchain game that looks good and games like star atlas is built on unreal engine 5 <clears throat> it's just you know sans art direction is not what i'm personally into however i obviously identified value in that early on so now the thing about sand here it's looking like a bearish divergence is going to happen because let's take note here of this money flow it's looking like it's starting to get lower we do have this bullish divergence that will possibly pop off but again what i'm what i'm thinking is going to happen is we're probably going to see something like oops 
we're probably going to see something like this. Before it going up. So this, this, oops. This bearish divergence here. What the fuck? <laughs> Hold on, guys. This bearish divergence here will need to confirm, probably plunge it down. I'm not sure where it would go. It could possibly test 58 cents, possibly 61 cents, or possibly 67 cents. But this is what I'm thinking will happen here. I'm thinking that the bearish divergence will have to confirm first, plunge us down. Meanwhile, macro, the bullish divergence that's forming will pop the fuck off in October once our market recovers. So that's probably the play here for sand. Again, this is a huge trading range here. I mean, oh, like 100 plus percent, guys. So you got some time. You got a lot of space to work with here. You got a lot of space to set up stink bids or whatever the fuck else you want to do. So that is looking good, in my opinion. I mean, I know sand is popping the fuck off. I think sand has, like, increased their number of holders by a lot. Let's see. Uh, Ethereum. Look at that shit. Already up 9%, dude. That dump was just so ridiculous. Look at that. 24,000 holders, guys. 24,000 holders. And then again, we'll take a look at their website. It's, 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 it's just like I said, you know, like this whole art, this art style is... Ooh, Walking Dead. Are you serious? Let me see this. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm a fan of this IP, but, you know, this art style is, you know, it's not my thing, but I do like what they're doing here. This is really cool shit. In fact, I'm interested in this, so. But, you know, sometimes you just gotta let some coins go, especially this late in the game. Like, FOMO is a hell of a drug. Like, here's where you should have been buying sand right here this is where you should have been buying or here right june here and here is where you should have been buying and again you know we can't tell the future but you gotta this is why i stick to this you know from all-time high 69 percent it's a good it's a good uh it's a good measurement to gauge if you're getting a fair price or not so you should have been buying here, should have been should have been buying here. Buying now is just literally suicide. This is just something that, you know, what I personally do is I have like a little checkboard, whiteboard or something, and I just write down these coins, you know, coins that I'm interested in that I will purchase during the bear market because alts will dump 90% or higher. They all do, okay, because when Bitcoin, Bitcoin's going to, when Bitcoin dumps during the bear market, it's going to take everyone down with it. Alts will especially get battered. A lot of these coins, we're going to see them. We're going to be seeing these at like 80, an average of 70 to 72%. Just shaved off. And uh, there's going to be a period where no one will give a fuck about crypto anymore. And that's when it's time to start scooping straight up. So last but not, not least, last but not least, let's take a look at Vpro. Then I think I'll just end it there. So let's see here. So same story as these other coins. We have this bullish divergence already starting. It's probably going to pop off in the first week of October. We have this bearish divergence beginning. And it's probably going to go lower. Okay. EMA ribbons have gone com have gone completely bullish. 50 day and 200 day are crossing. Looking good. Looking good. Now. B pros. Key resistance level is. 0 0.0176 and B 
Pro support level is still here at not that not one o three three eight. So it's looking like the structure is still intact here. I mean, we can we can we can loosen that out a little bit. I'm I'm hoping that B Pro will just continue to bounce off of this and then first week of October we'll challenge this key uh, resistance level probably it's actually perfect timing too that this bullish divergence is beginning it's probably gonna help it's pro oops it's probably gonna pop the fuck off and yeah in the first week of October because the 30th is when we will get the NFT marketplace so actually thinking about it now this is really good timing it's really good timing. So as long as BPRO does not collapse below this, this current trend is intact. If it does, then we'll have to reevaluate the chart. But if it does collapse below that, of course, you know I'm going to keep buying uh, because uh, BPRO is definitely one of my one of my top holdings. So yeah, BPRO is looking good. Again, if you're in the if you're in BPRO with me. Uh, we're looking good guys. We're looking real good. We got a good our trading range is still intact even though we dumped a lot We went right back up, which is fantastic um, But yeah, and then we have some good news coming in on the 30th of September and main net at the end of the year So we're, I think we're looking good guys so yeah um, That's the end of my video today. I hope you guys enjoyed the fast-paced uh ta hopefully i covered one of your favorite coins here in today's video uh if not let me know what you want to see uh in the comments i think someone was mentioning a coin now that i think about it i cannot remember the name of it if i did i would probably pull it up right now uh yeah i can't remember it but again uh Trust the plan. Remember, this is going to be a bearish month. We're recovering very nicely. We, we've recovered back to last week's prices. Okay, okay. So, you know, we're, we're, we're slowly grinding our way back up. So, I will see you guys in the next video. Later.